My name is Paul Wolliver. I'm the owner of Pinellas Power Products. I'd like to take a couple of minutes to demonstrate my extended run fuel time kit for the open frame single phase generators that run the 457cc Ducar engine. Uh, I'm going to be using the, uh, the Duramax XP12000E for the purpose of this video, but um, like the Power Horse WGen 9500 also uses this engine. The uh, the uh, West or excuse me, it's the Westinghouse uh, WGen 9500 or the Power Horse 9500. Just make sure that you're looking at something with the 457 cc engine. Uh, you don't have to remember that the engine is made by Ducar. Uh, the engine configuration on these is all the same. The control panels and the electronics may be in a different place. The key may be a different color. They may have rubber covers over the outlets or they may not. You know, bigger wheels, smaller wheels, different color. Don't worry about that. Um, the fuel transfer system is based on the engine and the requirements of this engine in terms of what fuel pressure it needs and how many gallons per hour of fuel it needs to run. Uh, my kits use a fuel pump to transfer the fuel. They are not a gravity feed system. So you will set the tank, your remote tank will be set on the ground, and the generator will be set on the ground. The only reason why I have the generator up in the air is because I'm old and I don't like crouching down, especially just to shoot this video. Uh, you can use any size fuel tank you want, from a 3-gallon to a 300-gallon. I'm going to be demonstrating it here with the 30-gallon. I will not be starting the generator because we're inside a building and this thing is loud like a rock band in a bedroom. So I'll be able to explain everything without actually starting it and that'll work out fine. Uh, if you want to run the generator without the remote tank, just off the stock tank, that is perfectly acceptable. You, you totally ignore the fact that my kit is on it. It absolutely functions exactly the way it did before you install my kit. Uh, if you want to go and go to my website, and there's a link down below here in the description section. It'll take you to my website in case you're finding this on YouTube. But it'll show you the product, give you the full description, show you the installation instructions. It's got a fine-tuning and troubleshooting video. It's got an, another nice video that explains why I don't do through the cap and why I don't do gravity feed. They are flat-out dangerous. I certainly encourage you to go to my website and watch the video. It, it does a really good job of explaining it in no uncertain terms. And it's, it's, it's not just an explanation, it's a demonstration. So you're, you're going to learn quite a bit there if you don't already understand it. Um, as I say, you can totally run off the stock tank. There's no problem there. Um, in addition to the parts that mount to the generator, my kit will include a fuel hose that will connect the generator to the remote tank. And it will have a fuel port for the remote tank. If you're using a large remote tank and you only want one of them, then of course the kit has everything you need. If you're going to be using like a whole bunch of six gallon tanks and rotating them out every few hours, then get one of these fuel ports per extra tank. So in other words, if you've got one tank, you're good. But if you've got two tanks, you'll need to order one extra fuel port. If you've got three tanks, you'll need to order two extra fuel ports and so forth. If you do decide to pick these up from a local marine supply, they are the Yamaha style fittings, not the Mercury. They look an awful lot like the Mercury fittings, except for the Schrager port is about 15 thousandths of an inch longer. And if you use a Mercury style fitting to butt up to the Yamaha style fittings, it won't actually flow fuel. And the generator will run for a few minutes and then start starving for fuel and it'll surge. Uh, so, with that in mind, the, uh, the operation is straightforward and simple, and the kit comes with this hose, as I explained earlier. It's approximately nine feet long. It's actually metric three meters, so that's nine and a half feet, roughly. Uh, there is an arrow on the prime bulb, and that arrow points in the direction of fuel flow. On the end that hooks to the fuel tank, 
there is an icon of a fuel tank along with an arrow pointing for the direction of fuel flow. And then on the end that hooks to the generator, there's an arrow pointing in the direction of fuel flow. So it makes it unlikely that somebody will hook the, the, the fuel hose on backward. If you do hook the fuel hose backwards, it will not work because there are check valves in it to make sure that the fuel only flows one direction. So in order to run off the remote tank, you hook the quick disconnect connector to the tank. If your tank has a manual shutoff valve, you'll open the shutoff valve. And if your tank has a manual vent, you will open the vent so that the tank can suck air in. Then you go over to the generator and you will hook the other end to the generator port. Now if you watched my installation instruction video, you'll see that it is up to your discretion as to where you mount this port. I mount it right above the tire because as you notice, the tire sticks out further than the port. So if you're moving the generator around, you don't bump this into a building or concrete block or your car or something like that and break it off. You also don't scrape your shin on it. Uh, you're going to hit the tire first. As I said earlier, if you're going to be running it off the stock tank, that works perfectly good. You simply don't even hook up this hose. However, in order to run it off the remote tank, now that you got it hooked up, you would move the fuel selector valve to the on position and then you would pump the prime bulb and when you pump in the prime bulb you will see fuel is flowing through the filter and you'll have to pump the prime bulb three or four times and what you're doing is you're getting air out of the hose because when you first receive it the hose is all full of air no gas so you pump the prime bulb until it is full of gasoline once it's full of gasoline you can either close this valve now or wait until after you've started the generator and run it for a few seconds and then close the valve. At any rate, just remember that with the valve in the open position like this, it is running only off the stock tank. With the valve in the closed position, it is running only off the remote tank. So if you have the remote tank hooked up and this valve is in the open position, it is going to pull fuel out of the stock tank until the stock tank is completely empty. Once the stock tank is completely empty, it will then pull air out of the stock tank and stall the engine. So make sure that eventually you do close this valve. The other thing is that you do not have to do the prime and purge the air every single time. The first time you hook it up, you'll have to pur purge the air out. Like just now, like say you take it out of the box and you're, you're hooking it all up for the first time, this hose is going to be full of air. Or when you're unloading your generator out of your truck and setting it up at your campsite, putting your fuel tank on, do the purge thing. Once you've got it all set up and running, if you're using multiple tanks and you want to disconnect from one tank and plug it into the other, you don't have to purge it. Or if you've got it set up at your house and it's hooked to a large remote tank, once you purge the air out, you won't have to continually re-purge it. it. It's going to be good there. So at any rate, as I stated earlier, my systems use a fuel pump to transfer the fuel. So now that you've got the whole thing hooked up, in order to start it from the uh, remote tank, you'd simply move the choke lever to the choke position and you turn the key to start it. I'm not going to be starting this in the room because number one, we're in an enclosed room, and number two, this thing is loud, really loud. So at any rate, you would start the generator. Once it started to run better, you'd go ahead and open the choke back up, and then you'd make certain that the fuel selector valve is in the closed position so that it will pull fuel out of the remote tank and not the stock tank. There is a decal included in the kit. If you watch the installation instruction video, you'll notice that. You can either affix the decal to the top of the fuel tank, or I chose to put it over here on the side 
That way, if you fuel or spill fuel, you will not wash the uh, the lettering off of the uh, the decal. Uh, that pretty much covers everything that I needed to say. Uh, there is a link in the description section of this video that will take you to my website, and you can read all the literature on it, look at the pictures of how it's done, look at the, uh, the installation instruction video, the demo video, which you're watching right now, uh, the fine-tuning and troubleshooting video, and the why my kit is safer and better than a gravity feed system. Uh, at any rate, I think that just about covers everything, and I thank you for your time.